OpenAI has released Assistants alongside the ability to create GPTs. Do you know the difference? And why should you know the difference? If you've looked at the documentation at all, here it is. It's not the most clear. It's, you know, there's some good documentation here, but it can get really slow too. Look, I am scrolling right now. Oh, there, it laggy, it caught up finally. So let's go through that today. Let's explain exactly what a message is, what a thread is, what a run is, what an assistant is, and how they all kind of work together. I'm Jordan Hansen from Beyond Bakes. I'm a software engineer and someone who's really focused on AI and automation, especially in the alternative finance space. I really feel that this is an area that can use a ton of automation and AI is just a huge building block for that. Let's get further into this and see if this can help you as your developers build out your automations and improve your business. This is gonna be a very technical um, walkthrough as we go through this. I'm gonna have a lot of code going through, mostly in Node.js. And I wanna kinda of go through what all this, how this works and what's going on here. Now, just high level here, what this is, overview of assistance. Really, in my opinion, you should look at assistance kind of like a GPT. You're gonna build an assistant or a GPT, something you can talk to about a specific task. You can give it instructions, you can give it files, you can toggle whether it should browse the web, whether it should be code interpreting, using the code interpreter, and all these different things. And this is your way really to communicate via API. So you can build your own little chat bot, something where you could talk via natural language and your users could just respond back and forth. But let's walk through the steps of how this all works. We have an assistant. This is kind of how it steps you through the high level of it. You create an assistant and you can do it via API or you can just go, let's see, I'm just gonna open it right here, right here, assistants, and you can just, create your own assistant here, and then you can go through and call that. But whether you want to do it via API or whether you do it here one time and then use all this documentation, that's fine. I created my assistant named Frank. He's a best friend, you know, my best friend named Frank, and he teaches me things. And so we're gonna just ask him questions and kind of show how to walk through this. Over here in my code, I have Frank's ID. This is that same one we saw over there. And how it starts is you're gonna start with creating a thread. So you're gonna say const thread equals Oh, yep, like that. It's assistant ID. Hold on, let me see. It's going to need a body. Yep, this one here. And it's going to get something like, there it is, messages. We're going to start with a message. That's right, that's right, that's right. Okay, so what we do is we say roll assistant. We're going to go over here and get this right here. So how it works is this thing. Threads.create, so we got. And then we're going to put messages in there. There we go. So we're here and we're gonna go messages like that. There we go, that's better. We have our first one and we're gonna say role user and our message content probably, yeah. Hey Frank, I am Jordan. Will you be my best friend and answer my questions? There we go, like that. Frank is gonna be a good buddy of mine, I can tell already. So this is going to start the thread and we're gonna just log it out log thread so we can get that id i'm going to run it right now we're going to say npm run tester let's have it set up so we're using opa as a node js implementation and it's going to just get the thread and this is the basic block this is how you start you already have your assistant created let's say you created it over there we could do it via api this time we created it via the gui we get our thread id and this thread id let me say const right there this thread ID is kind of how we get back to this conversation. So picture each thread, not associated with the assistant, but really it's associated with this message back and forth. So now that we have our thread, I'm gonna delete this right there. But what I am gonna do is I am going to get the messages. So if you're thinking about this in a typical way, at least this is how I thought about it, is that what I would do typically is I would think, okay, now the messages, we're gonna just show the train of the messages here. So what it's gonna do is get all the messages associated with this thread. So it's gonna get a list of them. And I see all of them, this has a limit of how many it's going to return. It will have plenty, but I think it's like a hundred or something and you can paginate through them if you have a long context going back and forth. But you can see the messages right here. There's only one. Is that weird to you? To me, I thought this was a little bit weird. There's only one, there's only mine. So really the assistant hasn't done anything. In fact, we haven't even attached it to an assistant. We haven't even used Frank ID right here. So now what we do is we use something called a run. Now a run kicks off the initial work, really. It's telling now the AI we're ready for it to process what's there. So here we have our list and then I'm gonna say await openai.beta.threads.runs.create. Now thread ID is what we give it first. And then the weird thing is 
to me at least, I think this is weird. We'll give it Frank ID. Now it's gonna run it. And we'll just say, we'll write this, const run equals this, and we'll go. We'll just log it out to see what it looks like. Now each run really is something you're gonna process every time you give it a new message. You're gonna give it a message, and then you're gonna say create a run. Like, go ahead and do stuff. And so you could probably add a, a bunch of messages, and then go forth and just add that run right there to process it. So it's gonna run it right here, and then the run is kind of something that's in progress. As it's running, it's gonna just work in the background, and then you just call back when you're ready to retrieve it. So we can check it here, right here. So right now it says it's queued, so it's not even in progress right now. We could go like this, and we can check on it again. We'll say like this and say const run ID, like that. So now we have our ID. Let's check on the status of it. Now the, all this does, all this run does is represent what is happening with this process. Is it complete, is it not? It's gonna have no additional data associated with it. Besides like, hey, this is like the status of it right now. So let's go like this and we'll get that run again and we'll go retrieve this time. Let's get the, do I even need, I need the thread ID, which is odd, okay. Now let's get the, the run ID. So it will tell us now if it's complete or not. I would guess it is. So it's gonna go through here and say, okay. And it might not be though. It could be longer or shorter, it depends. So now the status is completed. And I actually look, I have the messages because I begin the messages each time. You can kind of see the response the assistant gave back to me. Hello, Jordan. I'm just saying, yeah, I'd be more than happy to be your virtual best friend and assist you whatever you can. Did we just become best friends? Yep. So now let's say we want to ask another question. So what we do is say, okay, we got to do another, let's see, const message, or I think we just await. We just create it here, open it, yep, 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 like that. But we're not gonna create a new thread. We're just gonna go messages.create on the thread. Like this, and I think we go messages. Is it this role? Yeah, it is. User, content, and then we give it the message. So every time now we're gonna create a new message and say, okay, Frank, I am building a video right now, teaching how to use assistants like yourself. Yourself. Say hi to the audience, to the camera, there we go. So now we create this right here, but the run is still, I'll, I'll run it and we'll log it, but you'll see that it's not gonna matter. So we're gonna create the message and it's even gonna go on the messages list, but that doesn't mean the assistant is going to act on it. We can add whatever we want until we're ready to fire again. So we're gonna add that message right here. So you can see mine right there. Frank, I am building a video, this is my message. And the run is still completed because this run is a one-time thing. It's gonna just run whatever's there. So let's go like that, let's, now let's run it. Create, we're gonna create a new run. And the weird thing to me, this is a weird thing. You can have a different assistant for every single run. It's, it's kind of strange to me because the idea is that you could have a conversation and suddenly you could have an assistant that reacts differently within this message context. But why? I don't know why you'd wanna do that. That to me doesn't seem like the intention, but I guess if you're like, okay, I want, let's say you add a bunch of messages and you add some different things and you want them to act differently for those messages than they do for other parts, but you still want them to have context. I don't know, it's weird, but each run can have a different assistant ID. And if you log out the entire messages right now, we're just logging out the content, you can see it here. And the text, it'll actually tell what assistant ID is associated with each one. So I think that's something maybe we address in a future video to say, what happens if you have different assistant IDs as it goes through? Like, hey, to a bad guy and a good guy, I feel like you could have like almost a schizophrenic AI here. But anyway, we're gonna run the thing again. So like I said, no change where we add this in here until we create this new run. And then this run will just go through and handle it and, and kick it off again. Uh, and it's already going, so I'm just gonna say retrieve. We'll get that idea really fast. We'll see if we can do it quickly. There we go. Right there. Let's run it again. Okay, so now we added, oh, it added the message again. No, 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 no. I didn't get rid of this. I didn't get rid of that. Dang it, it added it twice. It's gonna be confusing for it, maybe. Whoops. Let's see if it's finished. Okay, here we go, it's building. Here we go. I have an error. Oh, I have them in the wrong order, don't I? This is thread, this is supposed to be thread ID. It's supposed to be run ID. I hover over it, yeah, it says, it needs thread ID first. So I just gave him the wrong variables. Ha, huh, look, see there it is, I responded. Hello camera, hello viewers, hey, it's, it's talking to you. Fred's, Frank's talking to you. It's great to be part of your video. If you have any questions about how to use AI assistant or need assistance, feel free to ask, I'm here to help. Enjoy the tutorial. So it's all done here. What's this thing, we, oh, there's all the other stuff I have messages. All that messages right here. And you can go through and you can kind of see each assistant, look, assistant idea associated with every single message like that comes back. So this is the user one. So obviously no assistant ID here. 
but every single one that comes back, it returns it right here. Really to summarize, the process is you create a thread, which is, I imagine that like being their conversation, and then you add messages, files, whatever you want, actions to that thread, and then you create a run, and then the run is gonna go forward and execute on those messages, read them, handle them. And again, the important thing and the interesting thing to remember here is that the assistant ID can change for every single run. So you could add messages, tell it to use one assistant, like your friendly best friend, and then you could add messages and tell it to use a different assistant, which would be maybe your worst enemy. I think I'm gonna try that in a future video to see how it reacts and what those messages look like. And then another thing to think about is that a lot of times, one cool thing about assistants is you can give them custom functions, like really code that you have functions you have in your code that it can use. And you can check out a video here where we talk about that, where we build disclosure laws, an assistant that executes disclosure laws and learns about them and uses functions. If you wanna see that, just check this video out here. It'll be really helpful for you. A lot of times, then the run will give back messages. They'll show how to use that. I do wanna show, I think, what a proper process of what this should look like, because you're not gonna just sit here in your code and just like execute run. Like, you know, you're not gonna just ad lib this code. It's gonna be some API or some program you have that in the background that is used. So like, let me just kind of show how I think this should be run. So really you want this kind of loop is what you're looking for. This guy. I'm gonna have this and this right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, here we go. I'm trying to figure out what I want here like this. So let's go like this. We'll go let run like that. Close await. This is where we're gonna retrieve like that. So, and then we're just gonna check, is it completed or is it failed? If it's not completed, it's not gonna fail, it's gonna keep searching through this. And then it's gonna say, okay, we're gonna get this, remember, an ID, and then we have a run ID. So we're gonna get that information right there. Let's see if I can fix this here. We're gonna create this new run, hold on. Let run equal, and this needs to be created though. This thread ID, we're gonna create it again, comma, Assistance, yeah, and then we're gonna go Frank ID right there. So we're gonna create it. So first what we're gonna do, we're gonna get our messages and then we're gonna create a new message that says, uh, await, opening ID, yep, that one right there. We're gonna say role, user, assist, or let me say content. Awesome, they love you, Frank. Right there. So we're gonna get that, and then we're gonna get the, the this right here, and then we're just gonna run it, and we're gonna say okay, constant. Oh, it's gonna get this, and we're gonna say okay, run. As we go through our loop, we're gonna get it there. We get this right here. I'll say run, run before loop. And we're gonna see what that is, and then when it's done, this is really where we're gonna call this right here. We're gonna get all of our messages. So we're gonna create a new message and tell Frank that we love him. And then we're gonna get the run out. So we're gonna start it. We're gonna initialize it when they're gonna have the run ID. And then we're gonna just initiate this every time and we're gonna get the run right here. Reassign run to whatever comes back from this. And that's how we'll get the updated status. And this is just gonna keep looping until it's completed or until it's failed. And then once it breaks out, we know it's completed. And so we're gonna come over here and we're gonna list the messages and see what comes back. So here we go. Just gonna come over here. It's gonna create the message on the thread and then it's just gonna carry on. Here it goes. All right, we gotta run before loop, here we go. In progress, in progress, you see here, in progress, in progress, it's gonna keep going. Oh, now it's all done. And then awesome, they love you, Frank. I'm glad to hear that, thank you. And if there's anything else you'd like to know or discuss, just let me know, I'm here to ensure, yep, there we go. So it all just runs. So this is really, I think, the way it should be run, is you're just gonna handle this loop. So that's gonna all handle in the background, and then when it completes, it comes back. So let's say you have a chat bot where you're going back and forth. You're gonna prompt the user for his whatever they want. The user will type it in, you send it back to this, and then you initiate a new run and process and process when it's complete, then you send it back and vice versa, just keep that process going until you completed. Really what you have to store is just a thread ID, which is gonna be that conversation with that user. And this is really a way you can leverage this and you can build it with documentation with all this other information you need. Really what we're trying to do is show you how to use the API to build your own assistance that can be helpful for you as you go forward and build out cool tools. Hit the like and subscribe button and you know, email me if you have questions. We have a bunch of really cool automations that we can do to help your underwriting process, whether that be on the operation side, the underwriting side, or anything we can do to really help you save time. We wanna talk about it because it's fascinating to us. Have a good day.